Hi, my name's Madeline Wilson, and I'll be discussing chapter 33, which has, brings up the idea of the muted group theory, which is presented by Cheris Kramer. The purpose of this theory is defined in the book as the language of a particular culture that does not serve all of its speakers equally, for not all members contribute in an equal fashion to its formulation. Women and members of other subordinate groups are not as free or able as men to say what they wish, when and where they wish, because the words and the norms for their use have been formulated by the dominant group, men. Um, so, Kramer A says that women's words are seen as not as valuable, making them more muted and at a bigger disadvantage. Muted groups often have to change the way they speak in order to communicate with the dominant group, which can change the message they are trying to share. Um, there are a lot also things muted groups are unwilling to speak about, diff uh, speak about in public due to the dominant group being oppressive of it. An example of this could be men not liking women who talk about their periods or cramps, even if it's a natural part of life. Um, key concepts in this theory include that men and women perceive the world differently because they have different perception shaping experiences. Those different experiences are a result of men and women performing different tasks in society. Men enact their power politically and their power causes suppressing causes the suppression of women's ideas and meanings from gaining public acceptance so women must convert their unique ideas experiences and meanings into the male language in order to be heard how it's been seen um men have been the ones controlling media for a while now. Historically, only men were published and men tend to listen to other men. Often women would publish under male names in order to get published, period. And female authors still get turned away to this day because publishers worry men wouldn't read a book written by a female. Women have created different routes in order to speak to each other about their experiences. Some examples include diaries, journals, oral history, folklore, art, songs, and nowadays Pinterest could be seen as an example. It is known to run underneath the surface of male orthodoxy. Um, it is believed that muted groups understand the dominant groups better than the dominant groups understand the muted group. It is because the dominant group simply doesn't put forth the same amount of effort. Your response to a muted group theory, muted group theory may depend on whether you're the beneficiary or the victim of the system. Um, it has been, this theory has been cited many times in many articles and research and just dissertations, all th sorts of things. All right, so an application to everyday life. One can look at the office setting. I specifically looked at a law office setting. Mergers, acquisitions, outsourcing occurs often. This causes two groups to come together with two different work cultures. So they often have these cultures overlapping, but the dominant one will slowly shut down the other culture. And this other culture tends to be women, people of different ethnicities, or people who speak a broken language. People in the muted group often live a fear of what could result from sharing unpopular opinions or ideas. Often the dominant group could and may ignore ridicule and disrespect their contributions. And then this is a quote from the article that says more than 50% of law students are women and some 45% of associates at law firms too, but less than 20% of those women ever make it to partner firms. The results show that women 20 years out of law school are dissatisfied with their access to business development opportunities, salaries, and access to mentors, among other things. It highlights that men and women have very different experiences in the legal workplace. Um, and this is not a unique idea to the law industry, law office thing, but many under, 
other industries experience this kind as well, including the IT field or a laboratory research setting. It's a wide phenomenon that needs to be addressed. So some questions that this brought up for me is what industries do you see muted groups occur in? Meaning which groups are leading to only dominant group ideas? Um, how does the movie industry further carry the stereotypes of muted groups? And how do you see muted groups pushing back on the dominant group in day-to-day -day life, like fighting for more equality? If you wanted to do a research project on something like this, someone um, did one muted group identity management of women in the United States Navy, and it is based on how women in the military are being limited based on being a muted group and it's very interesting so this brings up this theory brings up many unique ideas and frustrations that people face every day